what are you doing for the game? Do you want to hang out and like form a, a prayer circle to make sure you know, we can get Aaron <laughs> Rodgers through at least the first quarter through the first half? What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Bear Bet, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet on touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BearBets. That's, co- that's the code BearBets, B-E-A-R-B-E-T-S, two words, for new customers to get a $250 in bonus bets. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Good to have DK aboard for the uh, for the show uh, as a sponsor. It's always good to have like a consistent source for lines. Like when we refer to a line, it's always going to be the DK line as well. So now everybody knows where we're getting our info at the time that we are recording this show. So I'm the bear. That's Jeff. John and Will Hill will join us in a, in a bit for the gambling group chat, but uh, NFL season is here, Jeff. Hey, uh, is, does it feel like the first day of school for you? It does. Or Christmas we, morning. We, which one? Well, um, it feels like probably Christmas morning, right? Because the first day of school, I mean, I don't know. Does anyone look forward to the first day of school at some, some point? Some kids it, do. My nephew does. My kids love school, by the way. Yeah, they, my, my nephew does too, but he's a... We have, to, we have to drop our kids off at school immediately when it opens at 7.15. Like they, they want to, they want to come like, they want to go immediately really? in the morning. So, um, no, you know, it's interesting. I was, t- I was uh, telling my buddy yesterday that, you know, college football, there's so many more storylines, right? Like, like it's a, it's a more fun sport to cover and in the off season bear, but to me, the NFL, the way the game is played, the things I like about watching the film, mm-hmm. the scheme and stuff, like I, I'm so excited for it to finally be here. It's, it's they're two different sports bear. And it's it's exciting that we get the NFL tonight with Ravens Chiefs. I mean, just think about the way that the the, the you know the, the the Chiefs going for a three peat, the Ravens trying to avenge last season, and just we get Lamar Jackson and, and Patrick Mahomes, both two times MVPs. Like it's an incredible way to start the season. I'm I'm, I'm glad you said that because a couple of years ago I was had the the privilege of working the the Thursday night Amazon yes. game with with, with Kirk. And so we would go from the Thursday game NFL to the Saturday game college. And I wasn't sure about the whole college NFL. I was like, oh, college, college. And then you watch the quality and the level and caliber of play in the NFL and the speed. Oh, yeah. Compared to college. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's not the same sport. It, it, it It really isn't. And I found myself liking covering and working in the NFL games a hell of a lot more than I thought I really was going to be because it's just great to watch the, the the best do their thing at that level. There's also, I feel like a more uniform rhythm to an NFL game. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Now that college though has changed their clock rules, I think they're getting closer to the NFL, but there's a rhythm in an NFL game that we don't see in college football as much. And so you sort of understand the pacing of the game. They, they last ex- in lo- as, exactly as long as they're supposed to, obviously. College football, t- you know, will vary a little bit more. So uh, I'm excited for the game to start tonight. We have games, what, th- game Thursday, game Friday, game Sunday, uh, games Monday, obviously. And we got some great matchups in week one, Bear. So um, it's a good way to start the season where I think the NFL in some years hasn't wanted to go so heavy in week one, Bear. But I think because of all the quarterback injuries, they decided in week one and week two, they're going to feature some of these matchups that we used to get like in December, right? So mm-hmm. we're starting off with a lot of playoff rematches, um, a lot of good quarterbacks playing good teams, vice versa. And uh, we're going to get into it all in this podcast. And, and a lot of short numbers, which may lead to some potential uh, smallish type upsets yeah. with underdogs. And underdogs typically have played uh, and done very, very well yeah. early in the year. And I, I think that's a little bit, 
to do with maybe the odds makers can't fully adjust to what we've seen in the preseason or the offseason. They don't know what a move is going to uh, have an impact on the field. Yeah. So we've seen dogs uh, do very, very well early on in the season, certainly uh, in, in week one. You've got the the Ravens are a short dog tonight on Thursday, you should say. Uh, the, the Packers are a short dog on Friday night. Um, I don't necessarily want to get involved with either of those sides as a dog, but is there a dog that you like either, whether it's on the money line yeah. or against the spread? <laughs> I feel like I like all of them. Uh, but that's not a bad I, thing. I like I like Pittsburgh. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this more in the Yellen group chat, but um, I like Jacksonville on the road to Miami to cover that game. I like the Panthers. I like the Colts. I mean, there's just a lot of opportunities for um, some of these teams, I think, that either sort of didn't play their starters in the preseason, so we don't know what they are. Um, but also sort of the teams with Houston has a ton of hype, right? Dolphins have a ton of hype. Like, Jacksonville struggled last season. Oh, my God, we're off Jacksonville. Yep. So, like, all these situations where I think that um, the underdog has a great opportunity to to cover. But, look, if, if you think that an underdog is going to cover three, you probably think they're going to win outright, right, Bear? I mean, Pretty like, much. Like, like, basically what you're saying. Yeah, you know, that's part of it. So, uh, it's going to be a fun weekend of a ball. There's always, though, like, one weird result this weekend. Um I don't know where it's going to come. It's probably not like New England being the... the no. <laughs> it's not New England winning. Um, it's I mean, No, it'll the, be like Denver going to Seattle yeah, and winning or which, something like which that. Which everyone's so high on Seattle. I still... I, I, I kind of see it first. Um, but there'll be one really funky result. Um, remember the year that... Uh, who went one in 15 and they won? They was it the Colts in one in 15 beat Jacksonville week one or something. Like there was a weird mm -hmm. result that happened a few years ago. I mean, that, that just... It's the NFL, man. So... Um, mm -hmm. But... It's gonna be the best bear. Yeah, Colts. Colts are the dog that I think have a, a great chance. Well, they're that, they're right? at home, like they're home playing the the team in the Texans, who everyone thinks is gonna you know be up there for the AFC contention. Um, and it's a great opportunity to start week one off with a win. Home home dogs week one divisional. Uh, that that is a trend I do believe in. There are trends I think that are ridiculous that we throw out too much bear. Mm. That, that that that's actually a trend. Divisional home dogs week one tend to cover a lot. Yeah, I, I think so. That way they were very easily could have. Well, I don't want to say should have, but uh, Jonathan Taylor catches the ball on fourth down, and they probably go on to win that game, win the division, make the playoffs, and maybe people aren't as high on the Texans uh, this year uh, right. as a result of that because they don't win the division, they don't make the playoffs, yep. they don't win the playoff game, and 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 maybe uh, the hype isn't as great there. In, in Dallas as a, as a small dog now, I kind of lean towards them a little bit uh, just because the. The Browns are they trustworthy? Dallas is still a really good team. Yeah. So uh, again, I, I don't I don't think we're going to get this massive upset uh, of like New England beating Cincinnati, knocking everybody out who wants to use the Bengals in their uh, eliminator pool, their suicide pool. But I do think there are a couple of uh, shortage price dogs that yeah. can pull upsets, which leads me to Survivor. Yes. Who are we uh, looking at in Survivor this week? Who who, who uh, uh, don't we want to get upset? So I have a couple. If you have multiple entries, we talked about this last year, right? Week one, mm -hmm. using one entry on something that no one else is going to do. Right. So one of my entries, I have the Panthers. Uh, the Saints. I have heard <laughs> so much Saints in Survivor because people yeah. don't want to use – People don't want to use the, the Bengals, who are the biggest favorite. Uh, Seattle is probably like the second like highest win probability. And you got the Bills. Yeah. But like that is a super contrarian pick. Yes. Like, who are the Saints like to be a favorite over Carolina? Well, like, like who, this and get and get this much public support yeah. for Survivor. Well, we'll I we'll, love this. I love we'll, this thought. We'll cover this uh, a little bit later with my uh, best bent. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a hint there on where I'm leaning. But Derek Carr is a favorite, is atrocious, is a favorite. Uh, their offensive line has some concerns. And Carolina, we don't know much about Carolina because Bryce Young didn't play very much in the preseason. But I like the staff they put together and the draft they had. And, mm -hmm. and, and I like what, what, what they did in free agency. I'm just always and out. And remember, of Deontay Johnson's going over. His, he's catching 100 balls this year. Oh, I bet it. I, I, Better. I, oh, I tried to get him in fantasy, too. I, I missed out on that. That was what I was trying to sneak him into my fantasy team as well. Um, no, but uh, I think the Panthers are, are live here. Um, I know the, the Chargers are not popular, I don't think, for this play, but the Raiders just, I, Bear, I don't like the Raiders this season. I'm not saying the Chargers are going to be great, but um, I feel like I'm on an island with the Chargers as one of an, an option for me, too. Yeah, I, I, 
I don't have a thought really on that game for Survivor, but I kind of had it narrowed down to two. Uh, Tampa at home against Washington. Yeah. Again, you've got the numbers about quarterbacks going high in the draft. Uh, we'll see if the commanders can can realize expectations with, with a new head coach in Dan Quinn, a new quarterback in Jaden Daniels, uh, a defense that, that isn't bad. But at the same time, I, I don't like the matchup for Jaden Daniels going against Todd Bowles and that defense, which I think is still pretty good. You got a good running game in Rashad White. You got a dependable wide receiver in Mike Evans. You got a good offensive line. I, I think this is one of those picks for week one, especially where you're looking to, to, to zig when everybody zags or zag when everybody yeah. zigs. Like, and you look at the the Bucks the rest of the way, like you probably aren't going to use them in very many spots. I guess week three, they host uh, Denver. Week 14, they host the Raiders. And then you got Carolina at the end of the year. But who the hell knows what's, what, what's going to be going on then? Like uh, it doesn't feel like a team that you really have many opportunities yeah. to lose. And a lot of times in Survivor, it's those win probability teams that are like, just below like the top yep. one or two are the ones you're ultimately going to fall on because t- people are going to be less inclined to play those. So I like, I like the bucks this week. And if I had to take a second team, uh, it would be Minnesota. It would be the Vikings. You and I have talked about this. I don't think that the, uh, the, the giants are going to be very good this year. Nope. I know it is Sam Darnold on the road uh, in, in his old stopping ground for the jets. Yeah. And they obviously know Hawkinson. They have other, other injuries as well. But I still think with with Brian Flores and that defense, they're probably going to do enough to fool that yeah. Giants offensive line of Daniel Jones. I took uh, the Vikings to my other one, Bear. But I mean, do we do we have to fade the Giants in Week One uniforms? Is that like a thing that like it? Lo- it looks like a Montreal Canadiens uh, hockey Michigan jersey. Wolverine helmet. Uh, the helmets are sharp. Helmets look nice, right? I think it does. It does look like Giants a hockey are, jersey. Yeah. No, um, I, I think the Vikings here. It's also. Um, uh, becoming a, a sharp side, a lot of a lot of uh, sharp people on the Vikings in this game. Um, so I, I think I have Vikings one and the Panthers and my other one. So I don't know, it could be zero and two, one and one, two and zero. Nothing would surprise me <laughs> after week one. Yeah, it, it, it really it really could. So the, 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 this will be a great week of Survivor where you're going to see uh, some some crazy plays. I, I guess I think a lot of people are going to be on the Saints. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to use either Buffalo or Seattle right around six six and a half point favorites. Uh, the Lions, I guess, could be but the, the the Bears are someone that I've actually kind of thought about too. Now that I've heard a lot of Titans talking, I I didn't think that people would be on the Titans. I thought people would be run, lining up uh, to race the and, and bet the Bears, but that hasn't happened. So, be, be it, it's going to be a great week, and we'll all be rooting against those uh, most popular picks oh, in, yeah. in Survivor. And for more of popular picks, unpopular picks, survivor thoughts, and whatever else. Here is Will, myself, Jeff, and John Murray with the Gambling Group Chat. Gambling Group Chat is back. I'm the Bear Chris Flake, and joined here by Jeff Schwartz, Will Hill, John Murray from the Super Book. Join us for the Gambling Group Chat. Season gets going tonight in earnest. Uh, reigning Super Bowl champion Chiefs 3-47 and 47 against the Ravens who the defeated in Baltimore in the AFC Championship game. John, I'm just going to start with you. Uh, what are we seeing here? Uh, are, are you guys three out there as well? Yeah, we're so we're dealing with all the Thursday night NFL games at minus 105 both ways, Bear. So we're right now we're at minus 3, plus 104. Baltimore's plus 3, minus 114. So think of it like a 10-cent split. It's been all Kansas City, guys. It was Kansas City saw really sharp action in the summer when they were minus two and a half, minus 110. Public's on Kansas City. We're definitely going to be rooting for the Ravens tonight unless something really significant changes here this afternoon, this evening. I don't think it will. I think we'll be big Ravens fans tonight. Public and the Sharps on Kansas City so far. Yeah, let me let me ask you, let me just say that, and I wanted to ask you, because there are a lot of people out there who just automatically, oh, everyone's on the Chiefs. That means I have to play the Ravens. Is that overblown, <laughs> or have you noticed anything like like that where like yeah. a majority, like anytime you get lopsided play like this, would you say that that's something where maybe the, the side that is the non-public side wins it maybe a 60 or a 65% clip, or you really haven't seen that at all? No, I haven't seen that at all, guys. If it was that easy, then all of us could just say, hey, the public is on this. I'm going to bet the other side. We'd all be rich. 
and we wouldn't have to do anything but just watch and collect our money every day. Look, the public was on Kansas City in the Super Bowl. They won. The public was on Kansas City in the AFC Championship game against Baltimore. They won that one too. So I, I don't, I don't think that's a good way to look at things. Any information like that, all oh, the public's on this, the ticket count is this, the money is this, that information is all basically worthless. You know, we, we put it out there because people like to look at it. It's a good talking point for social media, but it doesn't really mean anything, Bear. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't let the public action scare me off of something. If I thought it was the right side, I'd stick with it. Jeff, you feel better now? I, I do feel better. Uh, but did you know that Lamar like always covers as a, as a, as an underdog or like, you, you know, so you, so you can't wager against the Ravens. Tr tr trends will tell you that right Bear. I mean, spicy Jeff on social media, uh, uh Mahomes, by the way, is great as a three point favor or less. Here's a, here's the deal with this game guys. For me, it's, it's quite simply the Ravens are going on the road with three new offensive linemen playing their first time together. The left guard did not play last season. He's technically a rookie. He has never started a game. The, the right guard has typically a tackle. He's playing guard this year. He started one game in the NFL. And the right tackle has started zero games in the NFL. He's a rookie as well. So you have three new offensive linemen going on the road to play in Kansas City on banner night. I know last year the Chiefs lost. I get that. Those guys that 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 dropped the football are not on the team anymore. So like I, the, 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 the Chiefs are better offensively. Defensively, they're going to be fine. And the Ravens go into this game, guys, with an inexperienced offensive line playing their first road game, Will. So I lean Kansas City for that reason. I, I, I think they're going to overwhelm the Ravens' offensive line this game. Yeah, and we always hear the stat about Andy Reid off of a bye. And, well, this isn't off of a bye, but it's the same concept. It's Andy Reid with extra time to prepare. And I think there's going to come a point very early in the season where the rest of the league sees Xavier Worthy and says, how the hell do we let this guy get to the Chiefs? Because there's just going to be a lot of plays where – Hey, Xavier Worthy, you run as fast as you can. Mahomes throws it as far as he can, and we'll see what happens. And uh, if nothing else, even if those are, are misses and long foul balls, that affects what the safeties have to do. And that, you know, let's see you, you uh, dump the ball off underneath, run the ball. And, I mean, some of those are going to connect, too. And that's an element they haven't had, you know, really since uh, since Tyreek Hill. So I like the Chiefs. I, I don't think that like this is some great uh, bet on the Chiefs, though, just because, I mean, you, you guys referenced the uh, AFC title game last year. Chiefs closed five point dogs. Now they're three point favorites. I know you're going to flip home field and that's worth like, I don't know, four points, two points each way, a point and a half each way. So this is a, a pretty big adjustment based on, and I know it's not exactly the same teams as last year, but you're talking an eight point swing from a, a game January till now. Uh, there's not a ton of value, but I do think the Chiefs win. And if there's one thing Andy Reid can hold over their head, and there's not a lot when you won two Super Bowls in a row, it's, hey, we came out last year on opening night and we stunk. We lost the game. Tony dropped a million balls. Let's come out tonight and win the game. So I do think the Chiefs win. Uh, and I'm curious, John, if this does land Chiefs on three, is that like a, a really bad result for you if it if you have to refund all these bets? That would that would definitely be bad. So we don't we don't want to say we don't want to refund anything, bro. <laughs> we, want to keep no, we, don't, right? we don't want the game to land on three because then we got all the people to bet Kansas City minus two and a half. They'll win. And right now, today, as we get closer to game time, there will be money coming in on Baltimore plus three. But you, you wanna you always want to have a big decision on the Thursday night game. You want to put yourself in a spot where you got a decision on Thursday night football because A, you'll either win big or B, everybody's pockets are just filled. As they head into the weekend, coming Either back. Way, it's not 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 a terrible <laughs> result for us. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to get involved here before the game uh, on the side. I, if I had to play something, I might uh, lean with with Jeff and the and the idea that the the Ravens offense might struggle a little bit and lean under 47. So uh, th that's what I'm thinking about tonight. But it always might be an opportunity to hop in live with some with something. Uh, I guess the biggest game on Sunday. Uh, the, the Fox game late afternoon, Cowboys, Browns, uh, the, the, again, an, an, another number that I think we've seen uh, quite a bit of money, and it's all been one direction. Uh, we're looking at the Browns, two and a half, around 40 and a half, 41. Uh, like the, like the, the game tonight, John, with Kansas City, is that what you guys are seeing, all, all Browns yeah. money with all the, uh, the questions surrounding Dak's contract and CeeDee Lamb's contract? And I'm, I'm assuming people have been betting the Browns out there. No, there's no doubt. You know, we, we actually opened this game back in May. Dallas is a one point favorite. And now we've got Cleveland as a two and a half point favorite, total of 41. So very one sided action on Cleveland. Dallas has had kind of a, a rough off season. You touched on that. And I don't really trust the Browns, to be honest with you. I don't I think maybe this will be, 
I think this could maybe be a really good spot to do a teaser with the Dallas Cowboys, take them up through seven, very low total in this game. Good opportunity there, depending on what your teaser pricing looks like at your book of choice, gentlemen. But uh, yeah, we're seeing a lot of Cleveland money. I do think that the public is going to come back on Dallas this weekend. We still have three days into this game. So there's going to be a lot of support for Dallas between that and center. Yeah, I, I think there's still some meat on the barn on the under. I know it's been hit a little bit mm-hmm. here, but you got a couple quarterbacks where look, it seems like there's always something with Watson. I know he went five and one as a starter last year, which kind of hard to believe because it doesn't seem like he's played that well, but he's always dealing with a shoulder or something. Dak all summer with the walking boot wh- whispers. He's not healthy and these guys haven't played in the preseason. So you got two pretty good defenses, two quarterbacks who might be a little bit rusty. I and mean, we haven't seen Watson play really since what Halloween last year, early November. Um, to me, this could be like a 20 to 17 type of game conservative early i think zimmer's going to help that dallas defense i think that's a an underrated addition i just think big picture too man everyone has kind of handed this division to philly i mean dallas has won 12 games three years in a row and, and i have heard one person pick dallas to win the division it's kind of strange i think they're up to plus 170 plus 180 in some spots to win this division i, I look I'm, I'm guilty of it too if you ask me who's going to win the division i'd still pick philly but i do think dallas is being dismissed a little bit not to go back to, to my offensive defensive line angle here, but both teams have some issues on a left tackle in this game, right? So you have yes. uh, the Cowboys are starting, not, not issues per se, but they're starting a rookie left tackle who played well in the preseason, but his first NFL start on the road against Miles Garrett. That feels like a, 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 a tough assignment for him. And we know that Dak Prescott over the years, when Teron Smith is not playing, who was this left tackle for many, many years, he's with the Jets now. The offense was not the same. Dak was not the same. So now you have a rookie left tackle against Miles Garrett. On the flip side, the Browns' tackle situation is not great right now. The right tackle was out all camp. He's back, but he might play left tackle because the left tackle is not going to play. Who, who's been who's who, who's been on PUP? So you have Michael Parsons and and Lawrence as pass rushers for the Cowboys. Like I feel like this is and and you're right, Will. It's, it was I think it was 44 was a total. It's dropped now to 40 and a half on DraftKings. Uh, that that's where I lean is a game where these defensive lines in critical moments on third downs take over and keep points off the board for both offenses. I, I, I do like Dallas here. And I think I'm, I might look for a, uh, a side to to tease up with, with Dallas through that, through that seven, get to get the, get the eight and a half with the teaser and, and, and something else as well. I'll probably even take Dallas uh, a little bit on the money line because I, I do think the fact that this game is flipped the way it is. Uh, I still can't trust Sean Watson, a quarterback who knows maybe oh, he, James he will play. Offensive line is an issue. Chubb is still out. So I am uh, – I'm I'm siding with Mr. Murray there. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Dallas plus a two and a half, and then I'm usually not a guy who teases games, but I think this is a really good opportunity for one of those uh, one of those teasers through the seven, which is such a key uh, NFL number. There is an obvious dance partner out there for you, Bear. The Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Can I interest you at eight and a half down to two and a half? Very I know, much I'm, so. I'm sure if you ask John, that is going to be on everybody's teaser card. They're, the teaser <laughs> gonna come flying in. Bengals and Bills. Bengals and whoever. Bengals and uh, and some right. high school teams. It's, Bengals <laughs> going to be a very popular teaser leg, and I understand it. I'm not saying it's wrong. I was thinking Colts actually. Well, I think yeah. I like the Colts. I like the Colts anyway in that game. Maybe you can go up through eight and a half, up to eight and a half with the Colts. They're at home against Houston in what looks to be the most one-sided game of the week. I mean, I'm not saying that means they're going to win. We just talked yeah. about that, but <laughs> the book is definitely going to root for Indianapolis on Sunday. Some threes popping up there. Yeah, everybody's on Houston. Yeah, I, I can the, actually the the Colts are, is is the great team that I really like this week as well. I, again, uh, you get Richardson back who hasn't necessarily looked great in the preseason, but you are at home and this is a, we we talked about this last year. They they were a Jonathan Taylor dropped fourth down pass from winning that game and winning the division and going to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And and now, and now you're looking at them being a home dog. I, I know the Texans added players in the offseason. They seem to be uh, the trendy yeah. team, but uh, they're there aren't a ton of games I like this week in the NFL, but the Colts plus the three is one of them, Jeff. The, the thing about the Texans that I, I want to see this year is the whole offseason they've been praised, right? They, they, they've they been talked about as a team that contend for the AFC. And, and look, I've said it myself, and I'm not going to be you know pretend I haven't said that I think the Texans are going to be good this season. But, Bear, to your point, like they've heard this all offseason. We have to see them play now with the expectations that they're going to be good. The Colts have spent months preparing for this game, right? So, so is everyone else. They they now prepare for the Texans. 
like to prepare for all the top teams in the AFC in the entire offseason. So I, I look, Shane, Shane Steichen, the Colts coach, I think is a superstar bear. Like he's going to be and will continue to be a very good coach on offense. He's found the, the best ways to get the most out of Anthony Richardson. Um, and he did that in Philly, by the way, with Hertz. So, and he did it with the Chargers and, and Herbert. So I, I think that the Colts is certainly the, the side here. I, I like the teaser that, uh, that, that John mentioned. It's, it's three right now in DraftKings. So um, you, you get a good number there. You know, we'll have to have to hop in there for sure. Uh, I guess the uh, the other game before we get going on Sunday, Friday night uh, yeah. in Brazil, uh, Eagles, who are like we were talking about, everybody's pick to win the NFC East against the Packers. Who it seems like the the Packers uh, fad trend excitement it seems to have cooled off a little bit. Like I thought the Packers were going to be a very popular side to upset the lines in that division, win that division uh, with Jordan Love back in the contract uh, and probably should have beaten the 49ers last year in the playoffs, but didn't. Uh, we're, we're looking at what, two and 49 uh, for the Eagles and, and Green Bay. Uh, John, what have you uh, seen uh, from, uh, from your angle? It's all Philadelphia, and it's and it's really surprised me, guys, for pretty much all the same reasons you just said, Bear. I thought Green Bay was going to be a lot trendier coming into the season, and really what we're seeing in the NFC North is a lot of money on the Lions and a lot of money on the Bears. Not so much on Green Bay, not so much on the Packers in the future book, and hardly anybody's on them tomorrow night. You know, we got almost two-thirds of the tickets on the Eagles. I know I said you shouldn't care about that, <laughs> but I do think – but I do think that's interesting when you have a game that's close to a pick like this. We had this game minus one. We've moved it to two and a half since then. But it's surprising to me that it is as one-sided as it is, considering how strong Green Bay finished last season, how good Jordan Love looked, how bad Jalen Hurts looked, and how poorly the Eagles finished the season. I am surprised to see almost 70% of the tickets on Philadelphia on Friday night. To me, this is a stay away game, to be honest with you guys. Like, I don't I don't really think it's a good idea to get involved. We don't know what the field conditions are going to be like. Mm -hmm. We don't know where these guys are at mentally. I mean, I keep seeing these quotes. These guys are saying they're hiding out in their hotel rooms all <laughs> week. I, I mean, I, there's 15 other games this week, guys. I, I don't know. I mean, unless you really like something here, maybe wait for Sunday. Well, that's what we always say. Like, our, the biggest advantage handicappers and betters have is – uh, we get to pick and choose what we want to play, and guys like John and folks at DraftKings, they got to hang a number on any on everything. So, uh, despite everything that John just said, was there anything you liked in the uh, the Friday night game, Will? No, what you said is so true too. And you always think, hey, if this game was on Sunday, one o'clock Eastern, and there were eight other games, would I be betting this? If the answer is no, then the answer should be no. Now, um, exactly. I haven't gotten involved. If I was going to say, say anything, it'd be over just because from a matchup standpoint, Philly really struggled in the secondary. I know they addressed that. They hope they addressed that with the draft. Um, but still, that's a good passing attack of Green Bay against the uh, Philly secondary that maybe we have some questions about. And then Green Bay, what was their weakness last year? Run defense. Then you get a Philly team with a good offensive line. You had Barkley, you had Hurts, who's going to be fresh. He's going to be healthy. So to me, I could see this is like a 27-24 last team with the ball kind of game. But John brings up a good point, the field conditions. they're not. Uh, are people going to be slipping and sliding all over the place? It's going to be hard to uh, – and look, that can affect the defense too. So that's something that you at least have to consider. But it, it would be leaned towards the over here. Yeah, Jeff, you saw that at uh, – it, uh... Tottenham Hotspur Stadium uh, last year with, with some of those NFL games that were over there. The field conditions were absolutely terrible, and, and actually the, the yeah. pitch never really recovered for for the soccer once the NFL left as well. They've been bad in most of the international games. Uh, I, I don't know why exactly, but that has seemed to be a problem. I think with the Eagles guys, and there, there's so much unknown, right? Like we, we think we know they're going to be better. We think we know they, they they've solved whatever issues they had at the end last season, but we don't know that right now, right? New coordinator, new coordinators are all over the place, right? So this is kind of their first game. Uh, the Eagles have a couple injuries on defense, right? And then offensively, no Jason Kelsey, the new right guard. Like, what's that offense going to look like under Kellen Moore? So I think I think there's so many questions about Philly in this game that to me it's a stay away. If, if everything works as planned as, as it is on paper right now, then I think Philly's going to win this game and probably cover it, but I'm not putting my money on that in week one without really seeing them play first. Yeah, I, I got nothing here. So, again, I'll watch and, and see maybe if there is a field issue or see if one of the defenses having difficulty or not. And, again, uh, I find myself these days doing so much more betting live and in-game uh, than, than I do pre-game. So, we'll, we'll see what this situation brings. I want to talk to you. 
start with you first, yeah. Jeff, here about the Monday night game, uh, Jets and 49ers. Uh, Jets have taken, obviously, a ton of money. It's down, yeah. to, down to four and a half, 43 and a half is where we are. As a player, like players like Trent Williams, who are just coming in now, yeah. Brandon Ayuk, who are just coming in now, uh, McCaffrey, who's been hurt. Like, what would you what would you expect to see? Yeah. Like, are we, we going to see Trent Williams in the game from the start and get go? Are we going to see Brandon Ayuk in the game from the get go? Are we going to see Christian McCaffrey in the game from the get go? Like, all because these guys are back now in camp and signed. Uh, is that ultimately going to be, have a the effect that I think a lot of people think it's going to have on the Niners? Uh, morale, yes, right? Like, you'll feel better with those guys. There. Again, I, I mentioned this before. We as players all root for all of us to make the most money possible. And we are on the side of the players when it comes to, or our team, I should say, when it comes to holding out in training camp. But then when it comes to regular season and sort of time for all of us to make our money, we, we want those guys back. And they're back now, right? Ayuk's back. Trent Williams is back. McCaffrey's obviously not back from a holdout, but back from injury. So the, the, you know, I imagine the Niners offense feels pretty good about where they are. As far as timing, right? Like, to me, Trent Williams is going to be fine. And McCaffrey, if he's 100%, it's just like go be an athlete. I, I think Ayuk sort of getting back to timing with Purdy. Bear, that might be the hardest part about the, those three guys returning to the lineup. I just feel like the the number moving so much is a tad of overreaction to like the bad vibes the Niners. I mean, I don't know if you should bet on vibes, uh, John, but it does feel like this is all about how the vibes in San Francisco aren't great right now. Nothing has changed with these rosters, right, between when the – Time this number opened to, to where it is now. The Jets didn't even play anyone in the preseason, so I don't know how you can make this decision based off of what you saw on the field. So uh, I'm sure you're, you're seeing a lot of action on the Jets, though. Well, it's, it's the Niners' rocky offseason. We talked about it last week, yeah. and we just touched on it again. And that's even before their rookie first-round pick got shocked yeah. over this past weekend. I mean, they've had a tumultuous offseason. The Super Bowl hangover element is something there. 49ers under the win total is one of the sharpest win total picks of the year. And the Jets are a trendy team. They were a trendy team last year. Obviously, the Aaron Rodgers injury on opening night derailed their season. They're a trendy team again this year. But we've gone from six down to three and a half. Now we are at four and a half on the 49ers. What I would what I would caution people about in this game is don't think of that as being that significant of a line move. I don't know how much difference there really has been six and four and a half. Those aren't really key numbers. It's not like this game went from minus one and a half to minus three and a half, something like that, where it'd be really, which will almost never happens in the NFL. So it's not a great example. But my point is, this is not, these are not really super key numbers. And I do expect the public, especially the money line parlays, to all be on San Francisco. So whatever survives the weekend in terms of money line parlays is going to be running to the 49ers on Monday night. <laughs> I think we'll probably end up needing the Jets, even though all the bets so far have been on the Jets. This game's four days away. A lot can change. When when you get a notification that someone has placed a money oh. line parlay in the NFL, do you just like cheer? Is there is there, is there like an <laughs> office like cheer? Like you hit a button, you guys just all like cheer. No, that's that's what we do when we put a college football teaser. <laughs> you know, when, when I see a college football teaser, when I go, oh great, that was good. Uh, no, that hey, like NFL money line parlays. That's the bread and butter. That's how people bet the NFL these days. So when our when our executives are like, who are we rooting for? What they just want a name of a team, and I'm like, well, it's not that simple. We just need somebody to upset someone. If all the favorites win, it's not going to be good. Will any thoughts on the uh, on on the Monday game? I kind of see this as maybe an under type game, low scoring, maybe even in the first half. I think with, with two teams where you had nobody really play uh, in the offseason, especially on the Jets, and Purdy didn't have all of his weapons. Two really good defenses. I think this could be kind of a little bit of a, a feeling out period early on. I'd be very interested in taking a uh, a first half under here, and then maybe a game under as well. Well, you're a Jets fan. I have Jets futures. I've hung my hat on this uh, Jets team. Uh, what What are you doing for the game? Do you want to hang out and like form a, a prayer circle to make sure you know, we can get Aaron <laughs> Rodgers through at least the first quarter through the first half and just, hey, whatever happens, happens. Let's just keep him healthy. Maybe run the ball early. 
Uh, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I'll, I'll take the Jets here, and we've talked about it in the past. If you do like them to win this game, 15-1 to 1 to be the last undefeated team because after this, it's a lot of Titans and Steelers and Broncos and Vikings on a neutral field and Bills at home. The schedule gets pretty easy. I'll take the points here. I just think uh, the defense, uh, I think Rodgers will play well. I think this idea that he's washed is completely overrated. He was playing with a busted thumb two years ago, and we know what happened last year. He's got a ton of talent around him. Uh, I can see this being a very tight game. I'll, I'll take the points with the Jets here, and please, once again, just just stay healthy, Aaron. Just stay healthy. Exactly. for Give us half a seat, something. Just let us dream a little bit, please. <laughs> I, I would love just a little bit of optimism and for, for it to be real. Just 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 give us a few weeks and, if, and maybe a couple of months and string us along a little bit. Let, let, let us really, really get excited about the season. But uh, another great primetime game. A uh, week one, the Sunday night game rematch of a real that really good playoff game between the Rams and the Lions. Uh, we're looking three and a half, fifty and a half for the uh, the Lions over the Rams. Who uh, the, the Rams themselves have, have had some injuries in Cam Nakua has been nicked up. The offensive line has shown some some concern there as well. There's no Aaron Donald. Uh, it sure does feel like like John like the the Lions probably should win and cover this game? You know, this game has really surprised me in the sense that we just don't, there's just not a whole lot to report uh, from behind the counter. We've, we've had this game at three and a half since May. We got three and a half, 51 right now, and there's just not, there's no decision on this game at all. I agree with you. It seems like an easy spot for the Lions, but the, the Rams are a team that we're getting so much sharp money on in the futures markets. Rams to make the playoffs, yes, has been a really sharp side. Rams to win the NFC West. We've seen a lot of sharp players come in on that side. So I don't know what to make of this Rams team. You lose is that, one of the greatest. Is that because do you think of time? Uh, sorry to cut you off. Do you Go think ahead. all that Rams future stuff is because of the, all the uncertainty that was surrounding the 49ers? Yes. Yeah, I you know, I do think that, but I, it also speaks to like clearly there's sharp guys out there that do think the Rams are going to be better than we did when we started setting these numbers back in the spring, back in the summer. It's definitely partially a fate of the 49ers who are the favorites in that division. But they're also betting them to make the playoffs. But like I said, though, for the game Sunday night, haven't really seen much yet. So the Lions are a popular team as well in the future markets. So I think people just don't know what to do yet with this Sunday night game. The, the Rams certainly have right new on the offensive line. They just made a, a switch with, with the offensive linemen uh, for, for injuries. But, you know, they have guys come back from injury in offense. And then defensively, they lose Aaron Donald, right? How much does it matter when you lose a Hall of Fame player like that? Now, you replace him with two young guys, but those is the first NFL game against a really good Lions offensive line. So I could see the Lions, um, you know, just win this game and it looks sort of easy as the Rams new pieces all work together. But I, I think the reason why the Rams have taken so much money in the futures market is when healthy McVay and Stafford together win a lot of football games. It might not be pretty. Sometimes it might have to rotate running backs and forgot the offensive line and, and defensively sort of besides Donald pass rushing hasn't been great sometimes. And they've moved guys like they, but they just win. They find a way to win each and every week and they have won a ton of games. Together. So I think that the play on the Rams is the idea that, if the offensive line solidifies, the young pass rushers are, are good at some point this season, that they just bear, they win a lot of their games. Will, any any play here on uh, Lions-Rams? I don't want to make, fade McVay with time to prepare. He's been uh, pretty good here in these week ones when you give him some extra time to get ready for an opponent. If you remember last year in the playoffs, this game was looking like a shootout, like a 34-31 type of game. It went touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Then in the second half, the scoring just died. And I think it landed on Detroit by one. It was that weird scenario where the Rams – had one of those in-between decisions. They punt. Do they go for it? They punted. Uh, I think in plus territory, I never saw the ball again. And Detroit won the game. It would be lean towards the three and a half. I hate laying three and a half. I know. I mean, you've talked to uh, to sports uh, book you know directors and, and people who make the line and say it's actually the wrong inclination. You should lay the three and a half because people are just inclined to to want to take the three and a half. That being said, I, I hate I hate laying the three and the hook. I just do. Um, something to note here though: the Rams drafted Fisk and Verse two of the top 40 picks from Florida state. If you've watched Florida state and their <laughs> drop off uh Fisk and verse might be two of the best players in the league because that Florida state defense has gone to hell. So maybe that's something to keep I, in mind too. Bear, real quick, I, I saw this this morning. Florida state's win total now is five and a half. I think still think that's too high. You think, so you think Florida state's going five and I mean, look, yes. they're, they're obviously zero and two. They're going to win five games or four what? games. Yes. 
They're, they, 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 the, I think the, they'll the, figure it out. I mean, the quick, the quick train will leave the station. Well, that, Trust me. That, that is the question with all the portal guys, right? It's like, how much do they buy? There's no backbone. And the oh, by, and oh, by the way, the quarterback but, stinks. I, I'm aware. I watched him play. I, watched, I, know, I know this. That's why I was on their win total under this season. But nonetheless, um, I just was surprised by that. They're five and a half. They're not going to beat. They're not going to beat Miami. They're not going to beat Notre Dame. Oh, now we're. They, still, hey, still got will Clemson. you hear this? Now the the uh, Miami homer is back after they win one game. <laughs> Last week he thought they were going to lose to Florida. I, I was very concerned about that game. Yes, and I I, I forgot to bring my Miami helmet in. I, uh, I sent a text to Oregon. Yes. No reply yet. Yeah, of course, I'm gonna have to get someone from Fox to call them. I'll bring the I'll bring the helmet <laughs> in next week. I promise. Uh, will you mentioned hate? And the game that I hate, the game that I want absolutely nothing to do with this week, and the game that if you bet it, whatever happens to you, you deserve it. Falcons laying three against the Steelers. I want absolutely no part of this game, John. Uh, wh what are you seeing? A and anyone actually like, wanting to bet yeah. this game? Yeah, you know, we did. You know, guys, <laughs> we saw some pretty sharp money on Pittsburgh, plus three, minus 110. That was back in the summer. I don't know. I can't get behind the Steelers with that quarterback situation. Personally, I don't, there's gotta be a better, there's gotta be something better to do with your Sunday morning <laughs> gentlemen than root for that, that quarterback situation in Pittsburgh. But I, I, all I can say is what I saw, I saw respected play at plus three minus one ten in that game. Although that was several months ago and you know, things can change. Uh, isn't this guy's the Mike Tomlin spot? This is the spot he always covers. It's it's like this game when you're like the Steelers stink. There's no way they're going to play competitively. This is the game that and I look. I'm on the, every Steeler under you could possibly have this season. We've Squad. talked about this on the show. But this is this is the Mike Tomlin game. This is the game that they always at least keep close. They covers three and a half now on DraftKings. When when they're the favorite at home by seven points, that that's never never take Pittsburgh. Then this feels like Will the spot that Mike Tomlin. It's ugly. It's gross. No one believes in them. And they go to Atlanta and they just went outright. Well, at, at three and a half, it's Steelers or nothing for me. I just think three and a half is, uh, boy, that, that's asking a lot for a, a quarterback in Cousins who's 36, 37, coming off an Achilles and facing a good pass rush. My favorite bet here, and I think it's still 42, under. I just think you have two conservative defensive coaches in Morris and Tomlin. Most coaches now, fourth and two from midfield, they're going to go for it. I don't know if these two guys are. <laughs> these two guys might punt by the field position game. Uh, Russell Wilson, to me, is a great under quarterback, too, because he's going to take care of the ball. He's going to protect the ball. He's going to try to you know keep his job, but he's not going to really move the ball. And again, he can't move. Uh, he can't take too much from the preseason, but when it looks as bad as it did for Wilson, I think you can't take something for the preseason. Their offensive line hasn't looked great. So to me, this adds up to, again, like a, a 20 to 17, 21 to 20 type of game. Uh, I like the under here. One more thought on that, Will. Arthur Smith, who's the OC in Pittsburgh now, he yeah. runs the ball at a, an yep. astronomical Good rate. Um, and so he's going to try to run the football, shorten the game up. That's what Tomlin does, right? Like he, he wants Tomlin wants these games to be three to seven points in the fourth quarter because then they have a chance to win with the defensive score. They get lucky with a, with a Pickens breaking a long touchdown run. And in Atlanta, per, you know, sort, sort, sort of protecting Cousins, run the football with Bijan. So I think you're onto something here with just the, the game style the, the, the style of gameplay would favor the under. It, and there will not be a, I was just to say, there will not be a dry eye in the house when the Arthur Smith tribute video <laughs> airs in Atlanta when he makes his return there. Hey, I was going to say, if there's one thing we know, it's that John Murray loves a good field position battle. A, a, a lot of punts oh, from right around midfield trying to pin teams inside the 10 yard line and the ball goes into the end zone for a touchback and you net about 15 yards on a punt. So we, we, we know John loves oh, great. seeing those punters come out there on fourth and three from midfield. Well, great, great memory from Will McVay hunting that ball away and, and ending the Rams season last year in that wild card. I still can't believe that of all the guys, <laughs> Sean McVay. He He's, punts it away. It says season's over, boys. Let's go to Cancun. He, he, him and Shanahan are more conservative than you think. You think they're yes. young. Oh, no. They're so offensive minded. They're analytic. You think they're kind of go for it. Cautious they're, Kyle. they're very conservative, both of them. It's true. It's definitely true. Oh. Are, are the four of us? Are, are we fading the Bears this weekend? Is the rookie? Is I was the, gonna say. I was gonna the say numbers. Like, is that a thing that we that we should focus on? It, it feels like I don't. I don't think it is, Jeff. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Bears, but uh, we, I, I see this stat a lot about what quarterbacks from the first overall pick teams have done. Throw it out the window because the Bears didn't earn the first overall pick last year. They traded for it. 
So he's not going to a team that finished with the worst uh, record in the league last season. He's going to a team that duped the Panthers in a trade <laughs> and got the first overall pick from Carolina. I don't think yeah. you should look into that stat too much because it doesn't really matter. He's not going to the team that had the worst record in the league last season. And I'm a Caleb Williams home bear, you know. That. So I, I can't really be bi- uh, neutral here. I do think it's silly to look at that and act like the Bears were the worst team in the NFL last season. They weren't. Yeah, I was surprised because I thought this was going to be a spot where everyone was lining up to bet the Bears, excited for Caleb Williams, excited for DJ Moore, uh, hard the hard knocks bump. I thought this number would climb, but but Will, we've kind of seen the exact opposite where it it DraftKings now it's now down to three and a half. I mean the four and fours in other places, but. It feels like I have heard all week long just a lot of cases being made uh, for Will Levis and the Titans going on the road and not only covering, but pulling in an outright upset. Yeah, I think that hard knocks bump, I, I guess we have to readjust how we looked at that because I think that was only a couple years ago with Campbell and the Lions because you watch that and you want to run through a wall for Dan Campbell and he's cursing, he's yelling at the players and you just feel like, oh man, this team's going in the right direction. I don't know how much you guys watched the uh, the Bears hard, hard knocks. It was very bland. Uh, Eberflus was kind of boring. It was just kind of a a whole hum edition of it where you didn't really feel good about him or bad about him. It was just, it, it wasn't a great edition. We have so much NFL content now too, with the, all, all the Netflix mm-hmm. stuff and all these in season hard knocks, off season hard knocks that it just, there wasn't the same juice for it. So I agree. It's a good point. Um, and it's funny, John, John alluded to that trade with the Panthers. It's just so, it's so interesting how much luck plays a part in life because if the Panthers had taken CJ Stroud and the bears had no idea what the, what the Panthers are going to do with that pick, the Bears would look at the, would be looked at so much different. Like, man, you traded a pick that ended up being C.J. Stroud. Same old Bears. What a terrible trade! And then their pick wouldn't have been as good this year because you know Stroud would have made that team so much better. So it's just funny how that pick had they had no control over that pick once they traded it, but they got so lucky that the Panthers you know botched it by t- taking Bryce Young. It'd be so much different if the Panthers had taken Stroud for the Bears. Speaking of picks, John Murray is not the sports book director at the Super Book. He's up with us. He's walking up to the counter on the other side instead of behind the counter. Uh, what, what, what are you, what are you yeah. playing this week? Give us a pick. Oh, man. Bear, I would never walk up to the counter. It's all mobile apps, man. It's 2024. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know how to place a wager at the counter, man. I do, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still looking at a few things. I do like the Raiders. I think the Raiders are going to beat the Chargers on Sunday afternoon. I hope so. I'd love to get plus three and a half. It's plus three mostly now. But I, I do think the Raiders are going to win that game which pains me because I love coach Harbaugh. I do too. I think he's really, fun. I think, I think Harbaugh is so entertaining and funny and I just, I want to see him succeed with the chargers, but I, I like the Raiders on Sunday. I, I don't know. I'm still looking at a few things All right. this week, man. It's early, man. I'm still trying to, I got to figure out what I'm doing in survive guys. I know, you know that, that consumes so much of my thought process. I, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't really taken that part of a look yet at the games themselves. The survivor thing, it gets. I'm nervous. I'm already nervous on yeah, Thursday. We are going to see massive carnage, I think, in Survivor mm-hmm. because I do think there are going to be upsets. There are a lot of small numbers. You're probably going to want to hang on to the Bengals and not blow them week one uh-huh. uh, again against the Patriots. I, I, I have it down to two. I got it down to to Minnesota and Tampa. Those are the two that I'm uh, I'm leaning with right now. So we'll, we'll see what happens, John. We appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Will. Thank you again for uh, for your contributions this week. As always, a scholar and a gentleman. Jeff, I don't know what I can say about you and I, but we'll be back uh, to, f- to finish this bad boy up with our survivor picks and a couple other thoughts. All right, Bear, we're back from the gambling group chat. All I heard there was the Chiefs are going to cover because I can bet on them even though the public's all over them. All I heard there is I might want to consider the, 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 the Bears for survivor now as well. I know I mentioned the, the Bucks and, and the Vikings, but... John made some really good points about this is not this was not a number one pick type bad team. Yeah, it's a very good point. I John I, makes you think. I just like that he too. that he said the public sharp discussion. It, it's not as important as social media wants it to be, right? Like where the money's at. If you like a side for a reason, you like it, mm-hmm. then wager on it, no matter what the public. Now, of course, if you maybe have some conflicting thoughts on a game. Yeah, maybe it's to look at the public and say, oh, well, I want to I be against the public. Or, and sometimes it's true, Bear, you find someone 
who is bad at gambling and you just fade them and they're typically going to be the public <laughs> side. We will have the bartender. I would imagine Sammy will give us a bartender pick at some point. Yes, I'm sure. Next couple of days. And it's probably is the Bears though, Bear. That's that's gonna, that's the that's the problem with the survivor there. Right. It's going to be the Bears minus the four. All right. Let's get into my, uh, my NFL fade of the week. I am fading the Arizona Cardinals defense against Buffalo this weekend. I have Buffalo's team total over 27 and a half. I know the Bills are trying to figure out some wide receiver things. Guys, I, I'm not worried about that. Let's talk about the the uh, the Cardinals defense here. So I'm going to read you their front seven, Bear. You, you, you let me know if you know any of these mm-hmm. last names. Nichols. No. Lopez. No. Jones. Gardeck. White. Wilson Sr. You, you probably know Mac Wilson. Yeah, and, man, yeah, and then yeah. and then Z- and then and then Zaven Collins. Okay, yep. That that's their front seven. So it sounds like you could put you, you that's actually like one of those like would you rather or you could name like name the the T like you could put that on like a like a a, a midfield and like back four defensive yeah. line for an English Premier League side and say, is this an NFL front seven or like an EPL yeah. like back seven? And like you could like flip a coin. Correct. And their defense wasn't good last year. No. And so I just think Buffalo comes out of the gate fast. Obviously, some some they're going to need a, a new number one wide receiver that to figure out who that will be in week one. But give me Josh Allen here with the full offseason of hearing their their offense not going to be as good uh, in week one against a Cardinals defense bear that I just don't think it's going to be very good. Yeah, no, this was something that I think we might have talked about a little last week, and I played that uh, last week as well, the Bills team total over. Uh, I am in full agreement. I think this is a high scoring game. Not to say the Cardinals can't hang around. I wouldn't lay the six and a half no, with no, the no. Bills. Never. But I think this could be yeah. one of maybe a a, 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 a 34 30 type yep. game uh, with, with the Cardinals having a, a pretty good offense as well. Uh, I kind of hinted at it with my survivor pick. I kind of hinted at it at the top of the show. And again, I like the Bucks minus the three and a half against against the Commanders. Uh, I think the Bulls defense is going to give uh, Jaden Daniels some problems. Uh, this is a good Bucks offensive line. I'm not long term bullish on, on the Bucks overall in terms of a an eight or a nine. I think they're kind of fortunate last year to win a a bad division and, and get to the playoffs. But I think here against Washington at home with everything that they have going for it, I think in matchup wise. I do like Tampa minus three and a half. I think it's a good spot. I feel like Tampa is a quiet team. Tampa won the division last year. Like, yes, they're a good football team. Uh, so I'm I'm with you. Bears best bet pre- uh, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. My best bet is going to be the Panthers plus four. Bear, we're going stinky here in week Love one. Um, look, there's the, the Saints are not going to be good this season. Some offensive line question marks. And Derek Carr, guy, since entering the league in, in 2014 is ranked 165 out of 166 quarterbacks against the spread as a favorite. He is With terrible. 166. I don't know. I should figure that out. He's 314-1 against the spread in his last 17 games as a favorite. 314-1, Bear. He's not good in this spot. The Saints are not good. I do not trust them. I think the Panthers, by the way, are going to be better than we think. I, I, I may or may not have some money on them to, to go over their win total. I might have sprinkled a tiny bit for, for, for NFC South. I think I like the coaching staff. I like how they built their team. Bryce Young will be better. He won't be, he won't be the best in the NFL, Bear, but he'll be better. Give me Panthers here plus four. He better be better. Who was it that told me is well, or I can't remember where I heard that. Like Dennis Allen, like the, the Saints have gone under their season win total every year since he's been, since he's been here. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's not, he's not a dynamic coach at all. He's just like, he's just a coach. He's just, a, just, just blah. The Saints are, look, Bear, for so many years, the Saints have put off the sort of restructure they have to do. Oh, they, they've been, they've been and, it's like a credit card tab that's yes. been running up for years. And instead of just sort of doing it over a year or two years, they're sort of doing it slowly where they like let a, a couple <laughs> guys go. And like, so they just continually get worse, but not bad enough to draft a quarterback first overall. Not bad enough to clear their roster of all their debts. The worst place you can be purgatory. They're, the, they're just in the they're sort of in this spot where like they're just meh. They're just meh. So uh, give me Panthers plus. Four. Look at a team like the Texans who were terrible. Yeah. And now you you won the division. You're in the playoffs and you're amongst the contenders uh, to maybe get to the Super Bowl. So you 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 can't be seven and ten. Does you no good? No. You either got to be in the NFL. You got to stink or be or be great. Well, I don't know if we stunk or if we, we were stink. great. We were great. probably. A little bit of both. Um, College pod is out. Friday, myself and Bruce Feldman and Sammy P will have our uh, our Twitter spaces, which will be on the podcast feed later. Make sure you send us some uh, some questions on, on Twitter. I sent you a question last week. I know you did. 
And, and I think we got to it. I'm gonna ask another question this week. Please, please do. So everybody, appreciate everybody for listening, sitting through Jeff and I babble about whatever. Appreciate John, <laughs> appreciate Sammy P for hopping on the college, hopping on tomorrow. Appreciate John Murray, Will Hill. Uh, everyone remember to rate, review, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. Most importantly, always remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.